Up to the 30, the 20, 10, 5, Torrey Horton back to the end zone. 20 yard play, guess who? Body up the middle, making another move to the outside. 15, 10, end zone again. Nice move by Brown. He's got space. He's got six. 35 yard touchdown for Byron Brown, a record setting night for the South Florida quarterback. So far, a little bit of a high snap. Genty right up the middle. Genty has room. Ashton Genty. Give him six. Second and long. Lagarde tries to beat it. The G5 Hive. All G5, all the time. Welcome to the G5 Hive Live, and we are excited to bring you another G5 college football coverage that you love each and every week. I am Luke, and I'm joined by my co-host, Justice. Another week of college football down. Um, We're climbing to that halfway point, and guess what? We got an ODU win for our boy Justice. Uh, it's a way, so you didn't get to like maybe celebrate the way you might you might like at home. But uh, well, I, I went to it. a watch party, so I got to celebrate with other Old Dominion fans. Um, so that was cool. Yeah, there's a um, there's a local brewery here, Afterglow Brewing, um, that they are partnered with the um, the NIL Collective for Old Dominion, the pride of ODU. They also uh, recently released a beer where uh, money money gets donated to the NIL. Um, And so um, they've been doing uh, events for athletics, I don't know, since like the summer. Um, And they have really great beer, too. So um, just a cool place. Got got to enjoy it with other Old Dominion fans. That was cool. Finally get the W. Um, Harold Fannin Jr., man, dude, like, oh, man, he is is just having. He's a beast. He's a beast. Like he, he was like their offense. Like, and <laughs> I was just screaming, like, just triple cover the guy, you know, put everybody on him or something, man. Cause like he was just torching Old Dominion, you know. He, but I mean, he did it to Penn State, he did it to Texas AM. He's, uh, he's torched every, every team he's played this season. And, uh, yeah, Old Dominion was no different. Um, lucky, lucky to walk out of there with a win. Um, I did not get to watch as much college football as I would like this weekend. I got to celebrate. I had a um, college teammate, played college baseball, college shortstop. Uh, Brad Bloom made it into the uh, Hall of Fame for our school, so I went back to celebrate with him and some teammates, and it was a blast. Um, tried to do things like we were young again. Does Don't recover uh, quite as quickly as I used to, but we – um, went to the bar scene. We uh, rode. We have a drunk bus on campus that will take you to the bars and back to campus. So we did a tour of that. Like uh, we we're we we're fully immersed in the college experience. Uh, yeah, um, that was it. Was a fun weekend. It was about a four hour, four and a half hour drive. So that that drive back Sunday was a little bit rough. But uh, went to uh, our football game. Our football game did not go too well um we uh i think i think it was 56 to 0 it was 10 to 0 oh, at halftime <laughs> 10 to 0 oh, at wow. halftime and lose yeah. i think it was like 56 to 0 63 that's it was right. not that's right not good so but uh hey if you're watching us on youtube please hit that like and subscribe button if you're watching us on x please give us a follow a like a retweet and if you're listening to us in podcast form please give us a rate and review all right, uh, let's get into our week five review, uh, the G5 uh, versus P4 games. What do you got for us, Luke? All right, so we had Northern Illinois at NC State Saturday. NC State wins 24 to 17. Like I said earlier, Justice, I did not get to watch a lot of football to my the Hall of Fame stuff. What do you, what do you have for us here? Man, um, Northern Illinois should have won the game. Um, they they had uh, some turnovers in the second half that really kind of crushed them. Um, they still had opportunity to win. They, they just couldn't get it done. Um, a couple of uh, interceptions. And, 
man, Northern Illinois looked like the better team, but they 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 led to their own demise with the turnovers. Um, so, but kudos to them for going to NC State, playing a tough game. Um, would have loved to have seen them get the win, and, and in my opinion, they should have won the game. Uh, they just they, they lost a turnover battle, and that's what lost them the game. Then we had Western Kentucky at Boston College. I was able to kind of track this a little bit, and Western Kentucky was held the lead there for quite a bit. But Boston College pulls out the win 21-20. to 20. Uh, I understand you had some eyes on this one. Justin, yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's uh, kind of like the Northern Illinois game, man. Uh, Western Kentucky kind of shot themselves in the foot. Um, Caden Veltkamp played lights out in the first half, um, and then it was complete opposite in the second half. Again, two interceptions um, led to, to Boston College points, and, and and that was kind of what did it for them. I mean, they, again, Western Kentucky should have won this game, in my opinion, um, but they lose the turnover battle, and that, that costs them the game. So, you know, at this point, in my opinion, the, G, the, 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 the G5 the G should have had two wins, um, but the turnover battle did not go their way and didn't happen. Well, let's talk about the win that did happen. Louisiana at Wake Forest. Louisiana wins 41 to 38. I covered some of that there in the offensive player of the week. Justice, what do you got to say about this one? It's um, you know, I hate to say this, but I thought the referees were pretty like one-sided. Um and, and not and not in the side of Louisiana, more for Wake Forest. Um it's there are several uh, several controversial calls in that game. They all seem to go Wake Forest's way. Um, but Louisiana, at the end of the day, was able to pull it out. Wake Forest had, had a shot to uh, to um, send the game to overtime. And, you know, maybe maybe that was the case of the ball not lying. The, the, the kicker absolutely shanked it and, um, and, and gave Louisiana the win. And so at the end of the day, justice was served. Uh, Louisiana got the win despite the uh, the poor efforts by the referees. And then uh, concluding the P4 versus G5 matchup, South Alabama goes into LSU, and LSU wins 42-10. to 10. Let's get into – oh, you got something there? I was just going to say I expected more points from South Alabama. I didn't I didn't think they could beat LSU, but I, I thought they would have at least gotten like you know 14 to 20 points. But, hey, yeah, live to fight another day. All right, now let's get to our good G5 versus G5 matchups that happen. South Florida at Tulane. Tulane just crushes uh, South Florida, you know, partly because Byron Brown went out, but they went 45 to 10. Mensa was just lights out um, from what I was kind of was able to pay attention to. Um, yeah, this game was over before. This game was over before Byron Brown got left the game. It was over long before that. Um, man, like South Florida does not look good, even with Byron Brown. Um, and the more I watch Tulane, the more I watch Mensa, uh, Darian Mensa, the, the more I'm impressed with him, man. Like he he is a daggone pretty good. He's a, he's a pretty good quarterback. Um, they still rotated him out some with Ty Thompson. Um, in terms of like running play, like where Ty Thompson was just going to run the ball. Um, but Mensa, Mensa, you know, he's got some running ability as well. Maybe not, maybe he's not as, as, um, as a, as great a runner as Ty Thompson, but he's, 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 he's effective at it. He can do it. Um, but man, he is just so accurate. Um, you know, just everything like on the money, this Tulane team, man, looks really, really good. Um, I think, you know, they, they, I mean, Today, I would say they might beat Memphis. Um, uh, It's going to be a good matchup when Tulane and Memphis play each other for sure. And that one's at Memphis, I believe, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, And let's go from one blowout to another. Ball State at James Madison. The streamers were flying. JMU wins 63-7. to What would you think about this one? Just, you know, the JMU offense, man. Back to back weeks, seventy points and then sixty three this week, man. Like they they got things rolling. Like you, like we said earlier, they got things rolling after the bye week. I would have thought Ball State would have um, been able to put up a more more of a fight than they did. Um, but kudos to to James Madison and the Purple Streamers, man. They were flying all over the place uh, on Saturday. 
All right. And then to a closer one, again, highlighted some of this in the player of the week, Texas State at Sam Houston. Sam Houston wins from come behind fashion 40 to 39. This one was an exciting one to watch. What were your thoughts? I didn't get to watch a lot of this game. I watched mostly like as the first first quarter or so. And um and that was dominated by Texas State. The Sam mm-hmm. Houston, the Sam Houston offensive line was looked looked really, really rough. Um they were getting beat by that Texas State D line over and over again. Um, you know, first first offensive series of the game, Texas State gets a touchdown. Sam Houston gets the ball. Uh, Hunter Watson gets sacked and fumbles, and it's a scoop and score. And they're down fourteen to nothing, like in the first few minutes of the game. Um, yeah, I, I, so I did not get to see what happened, what, where, where the the turning point was, if you will, uh, from listening to some other folks. I guess the big turning point was uh, Texas State went for it on fourth and I think fourth and one on their own side of the field and didn't get it um, instead of you know punting punting the ball. And uh, Sam Houston got it and went on and scored. And so that seemed to really kind of shift the momentum and seal Texas State's fate. Um, but, you know, when I was watching it early on, like I said, Texas State, the defensive line just kind of dominated Sam Houston. So kudos to Sam Houston for figuring out a way to get it done. So, I, again, didn't get to watch any of those games. But Hunter Watson had a lot of yards on the ground. Was it from the scrambling and then like have to go or what you were able to gather? Like they kind of had design runs for him. I, I didn't, I did not get to see that. Um, like okay. I said, I only saw the first quarter. My, my guess just by, by how things went, what I did watch is they were, it, it could have been a mix of both. Right. Because like I said, that offensive line was having a hard time with the Texas state defensive line. So I'm sure a lot of it was, um, Scrambles just avoid pressure. All right. Uh, then we had Liberty and App State. That game was canceled due to flooding in Boone um, from the hurricane. Fresno State at UNLV. Game we were excited for. Um, another blowout. UNLV wins big 59-14. to 14. Georgia Southern at Georgia State. The Battle That's- of Georgia. Back to the UNLV game, we, we talked a little bit about it, but man, that game was like I I I did I didn't see that coming, right? I mean, um, not not a blowout of that proportion. I thought uh, this would be a a, a tightly uh, a tight contest in terms of you know both teams being able to score, but that UNLV defense is legit, man. They're they're legit. Um, Georgia Southern at Georgia State. Georgia Southern wins 38-21. to 21. Georgia State, a team um, I think a lot of people are sleeping on that. I kind of get this. They're playing vibe. better than I think yeah, anyone expected. Yeah, that. They're playing better for sure. Like I get this vibe of like what Sam Houston was last year where they kind of like the ball just bounced the wrong way and they, they and you know, we're trying to find that first win but maybe had a couple opportunities like – Georgia State kind of gives me some of those vibes where it's like they get a, I mean they get, they got a nice one against Vandy, but like um, they they could you know be in a couple more games, but like put, putting up a lot of points. Um, so I think Georgia State uh, right getting doing the right things here going forward with that new coaching staff. We had a, another uh, blowout with. Uh, Tulsa at North Texas. North Texas wins 52 to 20. I feel like anytime I did checks the box score, uh, Morris was throwing a touchdown or, or something. I feel like he was just putting up all sorts of points. Uh, UNL or UL Monroe at Troy. We talked about uh, UL Monroe wins 13 to 9. More of a defensive struggle. Justice, what were your thoughts around this one? Yeah, I mean, I think it just came down to the, the you know the quarterbacks of Troy um, kind of getting knocked out, right? They were on their third string quarterback. That UL Monroe defense is good. I mean, UL Monroe is going to run the ball and play good defense. That's kind of be their their mo, I think, um, this year. Um, they have a they have a big test though this week against uh, JMU. We'll see see if that uh, defense can hold up against that JMU offense. All right. New Mexico at New Mexico State. New Mexico wins this one 50 to 
40, and then Washington State at Boise State. Boise State wins 45 to 24. The fighting Ashton Genties um, just crushing it. Ron puts in there in the chat, Genty for Heisman. Oh, Eric Froton, welcome. Love the G5 Hive. Welcome, Eric. We love you. Yeah, the um, uh, that I, I'm just surprised um, that Washington State wasn't able to do more offensively against Boise. I thought this game was going to be a lot like the um, San Jose State, State San Jose State, State uh, Washington State game or the Boise State Oregon game, um, and it wasn't. Uh, Boise State just kind of dominated uh, Washington State, which which surprised me a little bit. All right, now before we get to our week six previews. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like button If and then make sure you subscribe. If you're watching us on X, please like and retweet. Come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in week six, as well as look forward to week seven of the 2024 season, as well as bring you all up to date on the latest news and happenings in the world of G5 college football. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please subscribe and leave those five-star ratings and review. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hive. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go.